Hey friends, and welcome back to Simple Truth. Now we are continuing through Genesis with Joseph and some of his story. So we saw a couple different things uh, yesterday, and then today we're going to be actually looking at his uh, dream interpretation with Pharaoh. We'll be looking at his rise in power and authority, um, which we'll see a lot of. <clears throat> and then we'll actually see a little bit of that reunion with his brothers as well. And that story is going to continue on uh, throughout the next couple chapters. But there's a couple different things we'll notice um, as far as this being a, a different side of Joseph, maybe a different Joseph than we're, uh, than we're used to. Um, but again, we'll see a lot of his interaction with his brothers, again, though they may not know it. So once again, this is 41 and 42. Chapter 41. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. <clears throat> and behold, he stood by the river. Suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and they stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine-looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke. <clears throat> he slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin heads, blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all his ma magicians of Egypt and all his wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day, when Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker. We each had a dream one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man there, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass, just as he interpreted for us, so it happened. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh said, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard, I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream, I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine-looking and fat, and they fed on the meadow. Then, behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and gaunt. Such ugliness I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. Then, when they had eaten them up, no one would have even known they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly in the beginning. So I awoke. Also I saw in my dream, and suddenly seven heads came upon the stalk, full and good. Then behold, seven heads, withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And then the thin heads devoured the seven good heads. So I told this to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years, and the dreams are one. The seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing that I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come through throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, seven years of famine will arise, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because the famine following it, for it will be very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful, plentiful years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming, and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities." Then the food shall be as a reserve for the land, for the seven years of famine that shall be in the land, and the land may not perish during the famine. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in all the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom there is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, 
And as much as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. You shall be over my house and over all my people, and shall they shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will you and I will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he made him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephith Paneah, and he gave him as his wife Esnath, the daughter of pa the daughter of Patipharah, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of e Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, in the seven plentiful years, the ground brought forth abund abundantly. So he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and he laid up the food in the cities. He laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Joseph gathered very much grain as the sand of the sea until it could not be counted anymore, for it was immeasurable. And to Joseph were born two sons before the years of the famine came, whom Asenath, daughter of Patipharah, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all the toil of my father's house. In the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Then the seven years of plenty which were in the land of Egypt ended, and the seven years of famine began to come. As Joseph had said, as Joseph had said, the famine was in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, and all the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, do. The famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became so severe in the land of Egypt. So all the countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain, because the famine was severe in all the lands. Chapter 42 When Joseph saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? And he said, Indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt to go down to that place and buy some there for us, that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, Lest some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed out for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over all the land. And it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. But he acted as a stranger to them, and he spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them, and said to them, You are spies, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are, all, we are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today, and there is one no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. In this manner you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you, or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, but you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me so that your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so. And they said to one another, we are truly guilty concerning our brother for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us and we would not hear. Therefore, the distress has come upon us. Then Reuben answered them saying, did I not speak to you saying, do not sin against this boy and you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. 
And he turned himself away from them and wept. And he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, to restore every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. Thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with grain and departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money. And there it was, in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and here it is, in my sack. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God has done to us? Then they went back to Jacob, to their father in the land of Canaan, and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man who is lord of the land spoke roughly to us, and took us for spies for the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of this country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your households and be gone. And you bring your youngest brother to me, so I shall know you're not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks, that surprisingly each man's bundle of money went in his sack. And then, when their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me more. You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And now you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Really, really heavy stuff. I know we'll see a little bit tomorrow more of the change in the countenance of Joseph as he relates to his brothers, but I can't help but recognize a little bit of what he's been through, not saying I can understand the depth of it, but recognize the impact that it's had on him and the softening that it's had on him. Now, it doesn't act like it, and he doesn't act like that in front of his brothers, but that got me thinking about... <laughs> Am I, am I walking in that? Am I walking in a recognition of what God has done for me, what I've been through, what he's allowed me through? Um, and I think, it, I think it should humble us to some degree um, and, and help us recognize our need for a Savior because there are none without sin. So just what I took away from today's reading. But again, we will see more tomorrow. And hopefully we will see you there as well. Thanks so much. Have a good one.